So where we left off, right, we finished page one of section 3.5 on Friday. And so let's flip over to page two. Example two. I didn't want to, we started, we got to jump on the weekend last Friday because I didn't want to start this, this example and then have to bail out in the middle of it. Okay. So, right, we're learning about vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes, slant asymptotes in this section. So in example two, it says, let's investigate the behavior of the function f of x equals 2x plus 1 over x plus 2. We're going to investigate the behavior of the function, or what the graph looks like, okay, uh, for the value of x near minus 2, and as x becomes large, positive, and negative. Okay. So you'll notice that the domain for this rational function, x can't equal negative 2, right? The function's undefined at x equals minus 2, and that's why we're asking, right, what is the behavior of the graph? What does it look like? for values of x near minus 2. Okay. So, to investigate that behavior, we're going to look at some um, ordered pairs for values of x near minus 2. So I'm going to create a table, values. First column goes some values of x, and then the second column shows the function values or, or y values. And you know from previous graphing experience, right, when you graph an equation, right, for we take the x values and the y values and form order pairs and plot those points and then point to next dots. Okay. So but we're going to x equals minus 2. So what we're going to do, here's the coordinate plane. And here's, you know, the origin. And here's minus 2 on the x-axis. So we're going to look at what does the graph look like to the right of x equals minus 2. And what does the graph look like to the left of x equals minus 2. So we're going to start by the, seeing what the graph looks like to the right of x equals minus 2. So my values of x, I started at x equals minus 1.99, or one, minus 1 1.9, then minus 1.99, and minus 1.999, and minus 1.9999. And you can see as you go down the list, each succeeding value of x is getting closer to the number minus 2. And we're interested what does the graph look like uh, to the right of x equals minus 2 to the left of x equals minus 2. Okay. Now for each of these x coordinates, you've got to calculate the corresponding y coordinate, right? So you've got to use your calculator, right? Plug in. So I'm going to plug in minus 1.9 in for x over here. My y coordinate turned out to be minus 3.3. Then when I put in minus 1.99 in for x, my y coordinate was minus 298. And when I put in minus 1.999, my y coordinate is minus 2,998. And then it was minus 29,998. So, remind you, as we go down the column of x values, each succeeding value of x is getting closer to minus 2. Well, what do you notice about each succeeding value of y? As each succeeding value of x gets closer to minus 2, what's each succeeding value of y doing? Do what? 
get it's farther from zero? Yeah, it's getting large and negative, right? It goes from minus 3.3 up to minus 29,999, right? So we say that it's decreasing without end or without bounds. Okay? So mathematical lingo, you see the values of y are decreasing without end or bounds. So math, usually, math lingo usually says decreasing without bound, which means it just keeps decreasing without end. And students sometimes wrestle with the word bound. So in mathematical notation, what we write is that the function, the value of the function f of x is going to minus infinity, okay, because it's decreasing without end. as x approaches minus 2 from the right. Now remember when we talked about limits in section 1.5? We talked about limits from the left and limits from the right. So this is back from section 1.5. This means x is getting closer to the number minus 2 from the right. We're using numbers greater than minus 2. And getting close to minus two. Okay. And you know y values and function values are the same. So we could write y is approaching minus infinity as x approaches minus two from the right. So this is the number negative two, and the plus sign superscript means we're using numbers greater than minus two to get close to minus two, okay? So, I have a vertical line that goes, crosses the x-axis at minus two, and what we're saying is, right, the values of the function, or the y values, are decreasing without bound. The closer we get to minus two from the right. So the graph is going down. That's what we mean by decreasing without bounds. The y values are decreasing without bounds. They're going to minus infinity. The closer the value of x is to minus 2 from the right. Well, now let's look at values of x less than minus 2. So I create another table of values. <coughs> And so, minus 2.1, I started at minus 2.1, that's less than minus 2. Then I use minus 2.01, then minus 2.001, and minus 2.0001. And you can see as I go down the column, each succeeding value of x, is getting closer to the number minus 2. What are the corresponding y coordinates do as we go down the column of x? Well, at x equals minus 2.1, I got 32 for a y coordinate. At minus 2.01, I got 302. At minus 2.001, I got 3002. And then I got 30,002. So as x gets closer to minus 2 from the left, what are the y coordinates doing? They're increasing without bound, right? They're getting larger and larger and larger and larger. So as x gets closer to minus 2, from the left, using numbers less than minus 2, the y coordinates are getting larger and larger and larger. So we say the value, the y coordinates or the value of the function 
is increasing without n or bound. So mathematical lingual, we can write the value of the function f of x is increasing, going to infinity, so increasing without bound, going to infinity, as x gets closer to minus 2 from the right. We're using numbers greater than minus 2. And since function values and y values are the same, we can write y is going to infinity. as x gets closer to minus 2 from the right. Hold it. Yeah. yeah, we're using numbers less than minus 2. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. So we're using numbers, we're looking at the graph to the left of x equals minus 2. Those numbers on the x-axis are less than minus 2. And so what we have observed is that the closer x is to minus 2 from the left, right, the larger the value of the function is. That's going to infinity. And so, on the left, to the left of this vertical line at x equals minus 2, the graph is going up. Okay. Closer x is to minus 2 from the left, the greater the value of y. Okay. The value of the function. Alright. Well, we have a fantasy. This vertical line, x equals minus 2, that the graph gets close to on the right. It gets close to on the left, but never crosses. It has a fancy name. What's it called? An asymptote. Okay. The further up we go on the vertical line, the asymptote, the closer the graph is on the left. The further down the vertical line we go, the asymptote, the closer the graph is to the line. But it never crosses it. And so we can write... The vertical line, x equals minus 2, is a vertical asymptote. Any questions on that? All right, so then let's do the second half, right? So we've investigated the behavior of the function for the value of x near minus 2. Now let's look at as x becomes large, positive, and negative. And when it says large, positive, and negative, we're talking about in behavior, right? Out here on the far right end of the x-axis, and out here on the far left end of the x-axis. Mm -hmm. You know, with polynomial functions, right, on each end the graph either goes up or it goes down. With rational functions, it can go up, it can go down, but it can also flatten out. Okay, so there, there's a third option. So let's investigate the end behavior. For this rational function. So again, I'm going to create a table of values. And so let's do the end behavior on the right end for really large values, positive values of x. So I started x equals 10, and x equals 100. 
then a thousand, then ten thousand. So you can see as I go down the column, okay, the values of x are increasing without bound, okay, without limit. Without n or bound, okay, my values of x. Just going to, so I could do a hundred thousand, a million, and so forth. And then you got to calculate the corresponding y values, right? The corresponding y coordinates. And so when I put 10 in for x, I get 1.75. When I put 100 in for x, I get 1.97. When I put a thousand in for x, I get 1.997. When I put in 10,000 in for x, I get 1.9997. So as x gets larger, what's y doing? It's increasing, but is it getting close to a particular number? Two, right? So the larger the value of x is, the closer the value of y is to the number two. So in fancy mathematical notation, we can write the value of the function is approaching the number two getting close to the number two as x increases without bound okay, or goes to plus infinity. And similarly, we write y is approaching two as x increases without bound or goes to plus infinity. So, here's our coordinate plane, right? x-axis, y-axis, and this dashed line is the horizontal line y equals 2, right? It crosses the y-axis at y equals 2. So the larger x is, the closer the value of y, the value function is to 2, so that means on the right end, further out you go, the closer the graph is to that horizontal line, y equals 2. But it never touches it. Okay. And now we can see what's going on on the left end. Of the graph by creating a table of values. So out here on the left end, right, we're talking about to the left of the origin. So I started at minus 10, then minus 100, then minus 1,000, then minus 10,000. And you can see that as I go down the column of x values, they're decreasing without n, okay, without bound. Right, they're going to minus infinity. And right, they're decreasing without n slash bound. Okay. They're going to minus infinity. So now let's calculate the corresponding y values at x equals minus 10, y is equal to 2.375. At minus 100, y is equal to 2.03. And we have 
2.003. So as x decreases without end or bound, the y values are getting closer and closer to what number? This is 2. So in fancy mathematical notation, we can write f of x is approaching the number 2, right? getting close to the number 2, as x decreases without end or bound, right? or goes to minus infinity. And we can say the same about the variable y. It approaches the number 2 as x approaches minus infinity, decreases without bound. So on the left end, further out we go on the left end of the graph, like the graph is flattening out, further out we go on the left end, it's getting closer and closer to this horizontal line, y equals 2, but it doesn't touch it. It doesn't cross it. So that makes the horizontal line a what? A horizontal asymptote. It's an asymptote as well, but it's called a horizontal asymptote. So the horizontal line y equals 2 is a horizontal asymptote. Okay? Any questions on that? So, fortunately, we don't have to do a table of values every time you want to see what the end behavior in the graph of a rational function is, or um, what the behavior of the graph is around the vertical asymptote. So if you flip over to page, the next page, at the top next page, it talks about asymptotes of a rational function. And so this page is broken down. This part here talks about vertical asymptotes. This part here talks about horizontal asymptotes. And we're also going to learn about what are called slant asymptotes or oblique asymptotes. And we'll talk about each of these three sections as we work the examples down below, okay? Instead of reading definitions, I think it's easier just to work, work problems. So we're going to find vertical, horizontal, and sliding asymptotes and check for intercepts. Also sketch the graphs of each of the given rational functions on the next few pages. So our first rational function is f of x is equal to 2 over x minus 1. Okay. So we have to find the domain, the range, the equation of the vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, the x-intercepts, and the y-intercepts for this rational function. Okay. So, Domain. Now 
Now the way I did this, right, I did my chicken scratch off to the sides, and then I filled in the blanks with the final answer. So you might want to do it the same way, right, because you don't have room in the blanks to do both chicken scratch and write the final answer. Okay. So the domain, right, is all real numbers except those values of x that make the denominator equal to zero, right? So we can set the denominator x minus 1, we can equal 0, and when we solve for x, we get x can equal 1. So the domain in interval notation, parentheses, minus infinity, 1, parentheses, union, parentheses, 1, infinity. That's what goes in the blank. Domain and interval notation. That's exam one material. Right? You should be able to do this for exam three, sir. Right? Now, range and interval notation, that's like the last thing you do because we don't know what the graph looks like. We don't know what the y coordinates are. Right? We know the x coordinates will consist of all real numbers except for one, but we don't know what the corresponding y coordinates are. All right, equation of the vertical asymptote. There are no common factors in the numerator or denominator. So you set the denominator equal to zero, and you solve for x. And you get x is equal to 1 is the equation of the vertical asymptote. So that's what goes in that blank. And so at the top of the page, this part up here at the very top, that's what it's, how it is, you know, it talks about how to find the vertical asymptotes. Once there are no common factors in the numerator and denominator, right, you set the denominator to become zero and solve for x, you get the equation of the vertical asymptotes. Now, to get the equation of the horizontal asymptotes, you'll notice that the numerator is of degree 0, and the denominator is of degree 1. Okay? When the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, that's called bottom and the equation of the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. So that's what goes in that blank. Okay. And so Looking back at the top of the page, right here, this is where it talks about the equation of a horizontal asymptote. In case number two here, it says, if the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator, or excuse me, if the degree of the denominator Let me get this right. It's actually case one. If the degree of the denominator, the numerator, if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, then the x-axis or the horizontal line, y equals 0, is the horizontal asymptote for that graph. Okay. So in here, f of x, the polynomial in the numerator is degree n, the polynomial denominator is degree m, and so if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, then the horizontal line, y equals 0, which is the x-axis, is the horizontal asymptote. Okay. X-intercepts and y-intercepts. Well, 
call the y-intercept is this y evaluated at the, it's just the function evaluated at x equals zero and when you put in zero and for x on the right hand side you get y is equal to negative two y equals minus two is the y-intercept or the point zero minus two So that's what goes into blank right here, okay? What I just spotted. Again, you gotta do the chicken scratch off to the upside, up here or down here. X-intercepts. To find the X-intercepts, you set the right-hand side equal to zero, right? And solve for X. So we have 2 over x minus 1 is equal to 0. Well, remember on Friday I was talking about if there are no common factors in the numerator and denominator, you just end up setting the numerator equal to 0 and solving for x. But 2 can equal 0, so there's no solution. So there's no x-intercept. Okay? There's no solution. All right, so then the only thing left to do is find the range. And we'll know the range once we graph once we graph this function. Okay. So we know that the uh, y-intercept is at y equals minus 2, or 0 minus 2. So here's, and now you've got a grid, so you can plot these points exactly. So here's the point, right, 0 minus 2 on the y-axis, or y equals minus 2. And... We also know that there's a vertical asymptote, the vertical line, x equals 1, is a vertical asymptote. All right, so our vertical asymptote crosses the x-axis at x equals 1. And we know the x-axis, which is the line y equals 0, is a horizontal asymptote. So on each side of the vertical line x equals 1, right, the graph is either going to go up or it's going to go down. How do you determine that? Okay. Now the way I like to do it is I just use a test point. I just take a number just greater than 1 to see whether the graph goes up or down on the right hand side. So 1.1, right, is just greater than 1. So f of 1.1 is equal to, right, I'm going to plug in, plug in 1.1 and for x to get 2 over 0 0.1, which is equal to 20. That's positive, so the graph goes up to the right of the vertical asymptote. So the graph is going up. Okay. You follow me? Because this is positive. If it had turned out to be negative, it would mean the graph is going down. Okay. So y equals zero is a horizontal asymptote. So it's got to go like this. It goes up to the right of x equals one, and it flattens out as you go to the right. Because y equals 0 is a horizontal asymptote. Now, to see whether the graph goes up or down to the left of x equals 1, 
I use a number just less than x equals 1 to see whether the function is positive or negative. So I use 0 0.9, which is just less than 1. And when I put 0 0.9 in for x, right, I get 2 over a negative 0 0.1, which is minus 20. So since that's negative, that tells me the graph is going down. And it also goes through this point, the y-intercept, and it also flattens out on the far left end below the x-axis. So the graph is going to look something like this. It goes down to the left of the vertical asymptote. It crosses here, right, the y-intercept, and it flattens out. But it never crosses the horizontal line, y equals zero. Okay. Any questions on that? All right. So if you flip over the page, did we get the range? Yeah. The oh, we didn't do the range, did we? Thank you. Okay, so I'm glad we did that. So look at the graph. Is there a minimum y coordinate? No, because it goes down forever, right? Is there a maximum y coordinate? No, because it goes up forever. But you notice there's no y coordinate for y equals zero. Horizontal line, y equals zero is a horizontal asymptote. The graph never crosses that, that horizontal asymptote. So for this part of the graph, there are points on the graph that have y coordinates with minus infinity up to zero, but not including zero. And for this part of the graph, there are points on the graph that have y coordinates greater than zero up to plus infinity. So the range is minus infinity to zero, union zero to infinity. So the range in interval notation goes from minus infinity up to zero union greater than zero to infinity. That's the range. And in inequality notation, right, that's just saying y can't equal zero. Y doesn't equal zero. There's a point on the graph with every other real number for a y coordinate, but there's no point on the graph where zero is the y. Alrighty. Alright. So instead of starting the next example, let's just stop right there. Okay? We'll pick it up here on, on Wednesday. Okay? We'll see you Wednesday.